Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with egg roll in a bowl. That's right, you might think this was invented to avoid all that time-consuming wrapping and messy deep frying, but it wasn't. It was invented by the keto people because they can't eat egg roll wrappers. But you know who can eat egg roll wrappers? This guy. So instead of what's really egg roll filling in a bowl, we are going to do the real thing in all its tasty and textural glory. And to get started, let's go ahead and prep what makes this version so vastly superior. And that would be some crispy fried wonton strips. Except we're not going to fry them. We're going to bake them. Which is way, way easier and less messy. And what we'll do is cut up about three to four wonton wrappers per person into approximately quarter inch strips. And once that's been accomplished, we'll go ahead and transfer that onto a pan. And then we'll drizzle over a little bit of vegetable oil and toss them until they're all coated. And then finally, we will spread those out so they bake nice and evenly. And yes, of course you can deep fry these to make them crispy, which would be a lot faster, but also a lot messier. And if we're doing something called egg roll in a bowl to avoid the messy frying, then deep frying these strips does not make a lot of sense. And that's it once we have those thoughtfully spread out. We will simply pop those into the center of a 350 degree oven for about 12 minutes or so, or until they are beautifully browned. And believe it or not, that's all there is to this. As soon as those cool down, they're going to become beautifully crispy. And we will simply set those aside and use them later to top our bowl. And that's it. Once that's set, we can move on to our vegetable prep. And today I'll be using some green cabbage and carrot, which are the most common vegetables used in egg roll filling. And I'm just going to use half of this little savoy cabbage. And after cutting that in half, we will quarter it. At which point it's going to be very easy to trim off that core on the bottom. And while you can buy one of those pre-cut coleslaw mixes, I really hope you don't. Because by the time you get one of those, they're like three or four days old. And as I hope you can see here, it really is pretty fast and easy to do. And why this is so simple is because, as you may know, a head of cabbage is made up of many, many layers of leaves. And when you slice those thinly across like this, after just a minute or two of slicing, you're going to have a big old pile of beautifully shredded cabbage. And because we're using a knife-sharp knife, and not a giant dull vegetable chopper like at the store, ours is going to taste sweet and fresh, as opposed to theirs, which tastes old and bitter. And nobody, and I mean nobody, likes old and bitter. And that's it. Once we have that sliced up, we can transfer that into a bowl, and we will move on to prepping our carrot, which I like to do with one of these Japanese-style mandolins, which makes beautiful uniform matchsticks. And by the way, leave one end on the table. I pick mine up so you can see the pieces falling down, which added absolutely nothing to the presentation. But anyway, the point is that's a fast and easy way to do this. But if you don't have one, don't worry, because I know you have a potato peeler. And you can simply prep your carrots by making nice peels like this. And that will work just about the same. So to summarize, there's no reason to buy the pre-made cabbage and carrot slaw mix. Since start to finish, that's only going to take you about five minutes. And then besides our two main ingredients, I also decided to do a little bit of julienne red pepper, mostly because I had some in the fridge. We can also, if we want, do some freshly sliced green onions, as well as some minced garlic, plus pretty much any other veggies we find in the fridge we want to use up. And that's it. The last thing we should prep before we head to the stove would be our very simple sauce, which we'll start with some soy. And then to that, we will add some rice vinegar, as well as, if you have it, some sake wine or Chinese rice wine. Or if times are tough, just a little bit of regular white wine. Or if times are really, really tough, nothing. Okay, that's optional. We'll also add a little touch of sesame oil, as well as a little bit of white sugar, followed by some freshly and very finely grated ginger. And of course, a little bit of cayenne never hurts, especially when combined with a little touch of white pepper. And if you don't have that, use some freshly ground black. But if you have some, the white pepper is really nice here. And then we will finish up with a little touch of ketchup, as well as the secret ingredient here, about a half a teaspoon of cornstarch. And that's it. We'll simply give that a stir until that's all dissolved. And what that little bit of cornstarch is going to do later, when we mix this into our meat and vegetables, is that it's going to tighten up and thicken those juices just a bit. And any and all of our accumulated juices are going to become more of a glaze. And that's it. Once that's been mixed up, we can head to the stove, where we will transfer a half pound of ground pork and do a skillet set over medium-high heat. And then what we'll do is go ahead and break this up and crumble it as it browns. And no, we don't need to add any oil if we're going to use pork, 
since it's going to have plenty of fat, which is one of the reasons that's my choice here. But having said that, pretty much any ground meat's going to work here. Okay, turkey, chicken, beef being obvious alternative choices. So use what you want. I mean, you are after all the Billy Joel of your egg roll in a bowl. And speaking of New York state of mind, the next time I have some leftover pastrami, I am going to use it for this. Unfortunately, leftover pastrami is not really a thing. And then once I had that broken up pretty well with the wooden spatula, I switched to something a little more flexible and spoony. But anyway, no matter what meat you use, we want to make sure we break it up nice and small and cook it until we get a little bit of brown crustification on the surface. Are right, you see that? That is going to taste better than non-brown meat. Oh, and if you do happen to use one of those leaner choices, you'll probably have to add a little bit of oil to the pan so this happens. But that's fine. That is just you cooking. And then once we're happy with how our meat looks, we'll go ahead and dump in our vegetable mixture, and we will take our tongs and carefully mix that in. And then, very important, we are only going to cook this for like one or two minutes, or until those vegetables just start to soften and become flexible. All right, we don't want to cook these vegetables all the way through at this point or any point. So we're going to cook those very briefly, or until they look a little something like this, at which point we can stir in our sauce. And by the time that's been mixed in, and our vegetables have cooked maybe one more minute, everything should be ready, which means we can pull it off the heat and transfer it into a bowl. And in case you're keeping score at home, the amounts seen in this video are going to make two portions. And then once we have our egg roll filling bowled, we will top that with our crispy wonton strips, plus if you want a few more sliced green onion, which I think look nice, especially for the contractually obligated pictures. And that's it, our actual egg roll in a bowl is now ready to enjoy. And if you're wondering if those few crispy wonton chips on top really make that big of a difference, well, yes, they do. I mean, don't get me wrong, the filling's amazing, but this is not going to taste or feel like an egg roll without that crispy, crunchy wonton wrapper. And by the way, is a few grams of carbs really a deal breaker? Come on. I mean, you look fine. But anyway, suit yourself. And I don't believe egg rolls have ever been considered a health food. But presented in this format, what we're eating here is basically a big old bowl of vegetables, seasoned with a little bit of meat. All right, there's only four ounces of pork in this whole bowl. So it really is mostly vegetables, and very similar to the ratio you get in an actual egg roll. And of course, in a restaurant that's done because the vegetable filler is much cheaper. And it's a lot better for the chef's food costs. All right, those Chinese Zodiac placemats don't pay for themselves. But regardless of the reason, this ratio really works. And as far as the flavor goes, this stuff tastes exactly, exactly like a really, really good egg roll. And yet we've avoided all that time-consuming rolling them up and that smelly, messy deep frying, which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.